Welcome to Epcot's Food and Wine Festival for 2022. I'm excited to take you on a tour of some of the new food and activities that you can expect during this year's event. So let's get into it. This year, the Epcot Food and Wine Festival is running now until November 19th and will feature 31 different booths spread throughout the entire park. When you first walk in, you'll be able to take in the new Food and Wine Festival displays and pick up a festival passport. You can grab the passport at any of the stands in the front of the park and trust me, you'll definitely want one. It will tell you all about the food that's featured throughout the event and also some special events and challenges. The new booth for 2022 is the Fry Basket, and you can find it pretty close to the front of the park in the area near the test track. This new booth features the adobo yuca fries, which was served with garlic cilantro aioli, which was incredibly delicious, especially this garlic cilantro aioli sauce. I just loved it. We also couldn't help but pick up the Fry Flight, which is a set of three different flavors. The sea salt and malt vinegar fries, barbecued bacon fries and smoked aioli, and the sweet potato casserole that is served with candied pecans, toasted marshmallow cream, and caramel whiskey. All three of these were just delicious, and I couldn't choose one that I liked more. We literally devoured all of these fries, and I think they're a must for this year's event. Speaking of new, there's a ton of new food this year, and almost every booth has a new item to try. But a lot of the crowd favorites from the past are also back, and I'll go through a few of my favorites that have returned in 2022. This year, I also took on a couple of challenges, one of which was a Meals Fromage Montage, which is where you can choose five dishes to try out of a selection of 10. Only eight of them were available on opening weekend, but if you visit after August 11th, you'll get an additional two to choose from. And you can find the Fromage Montage on the very back of your festival passport. We also made sure to grab Remy's Ratatouille Hide and Seek, which is a fun scavenger hunt throughout the park for a prize at the end of the day. It was the first time that we'd ever done this, so I was really excited to see what the prize was. You can pick up the map at select locations across the park, and we picked ours up at Getaway Gifts under Spaceship Earth. So with my passport and map in hand, I made my way over to the first booth that was featured in the Fromage Montage, which was from Flavors from Fire, located a short walk from the Fry Basket near Disney Traders. This is where we picked up the smoked corn beef, which is served with crispy potatoes, cheese curds, pickled onions, and beer cheese fondue. There was also a couple of new items that you can pick up at Flavors from Fire, which is this Bon Mi Bao, which is a char-grilled Asian skirt steak served with chicken liver aioli, pickled vegetables, and a cilantro. There was also this Rocky Road chocolate cake that is filled with marshmallows, spiced almonds, and chocolate ganache. These two dishes were actually purchased by these kind ladies that were sitting next to me and offered up their dishes to be featured in my video. So if you guys are watching this, thank you so much for letting me borrow your dishes. I hope you guys had an amazing time. After leaving the flavors from fire, we made our way around the World Showcase counterclockwise and next stopped at Earth Eats where we picked up the brand new Impossible Meatball which is served with herb polenta, rustic puttanesca sauce, and basil pesto. I really loved this dish. The meatballs were packed with flavor and you won't believe that these are made from plants. Also in the area is Australia, where we picked up the new Lamington, which is this delicious yellow cake with raspberry filling and dipped in chocolate and coconut. I loved this cake and the raspberry filling brought this brightness that made a great balance between the richness of the chocolate. This cake has been featured in past years, but it's been a few years since it's been seen at the Epcot Food and Wine Festival. Next up, we made our way over to Canada and picked up the Canadian cheddar and bacon soup, which is served with this delicious pretzel roll. Canada was also one of the locations for Remy's scavenger hunt, so we walked throughout the pavilion to see if we could find him, and I'm, I'm not gonna spoil anything on where he was, but I was able to locate him and add his sticker onto my map as we moved along. 
While we were in the Canada Pavilion, it actually just started pouring while we were there. So we sought shelter at Apple Seed Orchard, which is where you can grab the apple crumble tart, which is one of my favorite desserts from last year. After leaving the Canada Pavilion, we made our way over to France, where we picked up even more new dishes for this year. The Brioche au Escargot, which is this brioche bun smothered in this delicious creamy garlic sauce and topped with escargot. I also couldn't help but pick up the creme brulee, which is this beautiful little creme brulee that has this raspberry jam that surprises you at the bottom. And it was such a refreshing little treat. I am loving all of the new items that I've picked up so far for this year's Food & Wine Festival. After leaving France, we headed to Brazil for our next dish for the fromage montage, which was this delicious little cheese bread that was filled with cheesy goodness. Also for the fromage montage, I picked up the griddled cheese from Greece. And to be honest, I wasn't quite fond of this one. I think it was the goat cheese aftertaste that just didn't do it for me. But my husband said that he didn't mind it too much. I love the honey and the pistachios, but I just didn't enjoy the, the goat cheese. I think that was it. But if you thought differently, let me know in the comments below. Next, I headed into Japan to go and find Remy, which took me an embarrassingly long time. Long enough that I even took a break to enjoy the performers for a little bit before I continued on my search until I finally found him. Afterwards, I made my way over to pick up the mini pina colada funnel cake from American Adventure. Because look at this, look at how beautiful this is. This new pina colada funnel cake is a pina colada ice cream with whipped cream, toasted coconut, and topped with a mascarpone cherry drizzled with coconut rum sauce. And it is just as good as it looks. While I was in American Adventure, I also couldn't help but swing by Hops and Barley to pick up the brand new Chesapeake Crab Slider, which has this tangy coleslaw and Cajun remoulade, which if you love crab cakes, you'll definitely want to pick this up. And I was also so happy to see that one of my favorites from last year, the hot beef sandwich, was also back at American Adventure. And if you don't mind a little bit of spice, I highly recommend this one. Also, while I was near American Adventure, I couldn't help but pick up the Mocha Madness from Joffrey's Coffee. So one of the new things this year is that each one of the Joffrey's Coffees has a new signature drink that you can try. So you can swing by each and every single one of them and they all have a unique flavor at every location. After rolling myself out of American Adventure, we headed over to Germany to pick up and I'm I'm totally going to fumble this. The sch schnicker schnicker the schnicker noodle <laughs> the, the noodle. <laughs> we got this for the fromage montage challenge and it's a delicious pasta gratin that is served with ham, onions and cheese and it was one of my favorite fromage montage selections of the entire day. Heading around the corner, we stopped at India Marketplace because I had to try the brand new chicken tikka masala, which is served with fennel spiced yogurt and naan bread. And by this time, I was pretty stuffed, but this dish was so good. So we powered through it to finish it up. One of the last brand new dishes that I wanted to pick up was the grilled pork shoulder lettuce wrap that you can get at the Swanky Saucy Swine, which is this charred corn salsa, pickled red onion, and cilantro lime cream, which is super light and refreshing, and I'm already planning on trying to replicate this at home. And since I managed to finish the fromage montage, I happily swung by Shimmering Sips to pick up my redemption prize, which is the strawberry ice cream topped with cheesecake and the super cute collector cup, which I absolutely loved. And since I also finished the Remy Hide and Seek map, I went over to pick up my prize from that too from the creator shop, which was a choice of one of four different cups, Remy, Mickey, Tiana, and Figment. It was a really tough choice between Mickey and Remy, but at the end of the day, I thought I might as well get the Remy cup to go along with my Emil one that I got from the fromage montage. 
And while I'm talking about these fun things to take home, if you're looking for a few fun mementos from the Food and Wine Festival, there is a ton of new merch this year. Not only can you pick up the merch from the creator shop, but there's several festival markets and the port of entry shop that you can visit along the way. There are different collections this year, starting with the Epcot International Food and Wine Festival event logo apparel and accessories, and there's also Chef Mickey Mouse and Chef Minnie Mouse kitchen items and these beautiful Dooney and Burke accessories. I also found Princess Tiana pins and there's also kitchenware and clothing to go with that. In addition to Chef Figment apparel, kitchenware, and other festival favorites. If you enjoyed this video and are spending even more time in Disney World, I've got a whole playlist for you of complete guides that I'll plug up on the screen right now. In this playlist, I will walk you around each and every one of the attractions in all of the parks to help you plan your day. So until next time, everyone, I hope you have an amazing day and go out and enjoy some Florida sunshine.